The field of artificial intelligence has been progressing rapidly in recent years. AI is used everywhere today, from autonomous vehicles to facial recognition, to chatbots, to advanced video analytics. The intersection of GIS and location with artificial intelligence is known as GeoAI. GeoAI is up and opening up new opportunities for state and local governments to automate those workflows that consume operations and to get in front of real world problems. Governments are collecting so much data today that the ability to analyze it is more challenging. GeoAI helps to turn this data into intelligence that offers new insight into your community. ESRI is investing heavily in the field of GeoAI and has tools that support every step in these workflows. State and local governments, they're beginning to use these capabilities today. Some are using imagery or video to find objects and detect change. They're inventorying right-of-way assets, identifying blight and graffiti, vehicles from closed circuit television. They're collecting data faster and during this pandemic more safely. Others are making predictions, predicting sp spatial events such as crime patterns, traffic accidents, or where we're likely to experience infrastructure failure. Still, others are focused on pattern detection, finding statistically significant patterns and clusters, looking, for example, at mobility and patterns of movement within a city. These organizations are implementing practical solutions to better understand their communities and get in front of challenges. Today, we're gonna to hear from one such community, the city of Raleigh, North Carolina. Raleigh has long recognized GIS as a foundational technology for building a smart city. And they've continued to build upon that foundation by introducing automation and new technologies with a goal of improving city operations and enhancing data sharing and analysis. One of the more recent initiatives has been the introduction of artificial intelligence and machine learning with GIS. I'm pleased to welcome to the summit Beth Stagner and Jim Albert from the city of Raleigh. Beth currently serves as the city's interim CIO and has served in numerous roles within the IT department over her tenure, which started in geographic information services. She directs the enterprise applications and data division, which manages enterprise software platforms and integrations across the city's technology portfolio. And Jim, he's been with the city for six years in various technology management roles. Currently, he's the GIS and Emerging Technology Manager for the city, and he leads a team of web developers and technologists that deliver dozens of digital solutions for both internal and public use. Beth and Jim, welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you, Mike, and welcome, everybody. Uh, this is great to be here, even if it is virtually, and uh, I appreciate you joining us today, and I appreciate Esri for making this virtual summit happen. Um, it's not easy. There's a lot that goes into it, and I think they're going to do a fabulous job in pulling this off for us. So today we're going to start with um, our applying artificial intelligence and machine learning to real-world problems, and we're going to talk uh, a little bit about the city and what we've done, and we hope that it resonates with, with you and your organizations. The first thing that we want to talk about is Raleigh itself. So Raleigh is the center of um, the capital of North Carolina. We have about a half a million population, um, employees roughly around 4,000 full-time, um, 800 part-time, but that can spike in seasonal. We have parks and recreation that pull in a good couple thousand each year with um, some of the activities that they do. We have roughly about a, a million dollar combined between our capital and operating uh, budgets, and we're, we're sizable. So we are one of the largest, if not the largest um, municipal area in Wake County itself. And we have neighboring county uh, municipalities within the Wake County area. This area has been kind of a hotbed for GIS. Even the state as a whole has been for quite some time. So 
as we grow and, ex and, and expand um, with our populations and, and just the ability to serve people, it's not just us. So within the county, we have uh, neighboring communities that are also seeing this growth in the last decade. We also have some other um, neighboring partners in the South and um, East that are also growing. We're, we're doing a lot and we continue to have people that are coming and we continue to serve them. And the GIS world helps us do that. So there's sort of three peers um, that we use when we're talking about our strategy. So the first one is our IT strategy. And as uh, Mike mentioned, we've been doing GIS for quite a long time. We uh, started in the early 90s and we've grown that over 30 years. And it's, it's, it's robust and it provides a lot of things for us. We've also identified in the um, early 90s or the mid 90s, we identified that uh, GIS doesn't belong just in, in planning. That's where we started. That's probably where most of your GIS agencies started. Maybe they're still there, maybe they've evolved somewhere else, but early on the city recognized this as quite a foundational and enterprise technology and, and moved it into IT. Um, at the time, it probably seemed sort of odd. Um, we did not necessarily fit with the typical IT crowd, and, and the IT crowd was a little different for us. But um, through that time, we realized that there are some great um, benefits that we received out of being exposed to the IT processes and change management, as well as some other things. Another aspect to our strategy is our city strategy, and we are embarking on the second citywide strategic plan. It's a five-year strategic plan. We've just finished one and we've just finalized the next one. The strategic plan gives the city the ability to um, have a, a foundation and a direction for some cross-departmental work that, that helps the city and the citizens. It may be involving numerous departments. It may be focused in one area, but what it does is it does give us this governance structure to advance some initiatives and it provides a space for collaboration, which sometimes maybe doesn't happen in an organization that has basically 20 different departments that are challenged to do their, their normal business. Then the third aspect of our strategy is something that we've developed in the last few years, which is a smart city strategy. And AI really is gonna catapult this quite, quite far. We have some underpinnings of technology that really are helping to boost it up but the marriage of those technologies and the AI is what's gonna advance this. So to kind of carry on what Beth was talking about, this is happening in our city and happening in every city in the country, every county and every state. So we're seeing this massive instrumentation of our city, whether it be trash cans reporting their fullness or a uh, parking meter uh, sharing transactional data, our, all of our vehicles reporting their location and telemetry and our bikes and scooters reporting all of the trips that they're taking. Um, this, all of these things are instrumented in one form or another. Um, and this is both a opportunity and a challenge for the city. And so in, in Raleigh, we, we look at it from an opportunity perspective. So um, all of these devices, all of these assets that are, are being uh, deployed in our city are reporting data. Uh, we can call it digital exhaust. We can call it uh, telemetry. Uh, we're using the Esri Geo event platform to ingest this data, process this data, and try and make sense of it. And we think that offers us three really, really good opportunities. One, we have uh, a really talented team. So these folks are familiar with this technology. Um, it, it is really good technology, so that gives us some confidence that as we deploy more and more assets that are instrumented, we're confident we're going to be able to ingest and process this data. Two, it's part of that enterprise platform that Beth was talking about earlier. So as we process this data on this enterprise platform, we can now share this data with a broad range of, of staff to make oper operational decisions and as well as strategic decisions. And the third is, is that platform has a bunch of tools on top of it that allow us to analyze and visualize that data to make it consumable. So um, one of the data sets that we, we 
you know, we have 160 cameras in the city and it, one of the examples of, of integrating that with this enterprise platform we were talking about earlier is cameras. And so um, traditionally, if you were lucky enough to be sitting in the traffic management center, you would have access to the video streams of any of these 160 cameras. Unfortunately, if you were not in the traffic management center, you likely did not have access to these cameras. So an initial step was to integrate the, these camera streams with our enterprise GIS system, and we could create some map-based applications to allow staff, appropriate staff, to gain access to these cameras. So this is a video you've likely all seen before. It is, uh, you know, it's a marketing video around um, object detection using traffic cameras. The difference here for us is these streets are our streets. These intersections are our intersections and these cameras reporting this information are our cameras. So when we were, when we talked to our transportation folks and business folks about this opportunity, this changed the conversation from machine learning from an abstract idea to a very relevant idea. This is, the, you know, it became touchable and feelable. They understood um, that this was potentially a game changer. And so when partnering with transportation, you know, we had a lot of really good support from uh, Director of Transportation Michael Moore and, and his really talented team to take this and start to uh, learn more about how the people move around our city using this technology. So uh, working with Esri, we did a pilot um, to take that video I showed in the previous slide and start to quantify, apply analytics, and present it back using dashboards. So we presented this uh, internally to some folks and the feedback that we got was, wow, this is great. Um, this is really interesting information. It would be more valuable if it could uh, be packaged in a way that meets some of our business kind of goals. And so one of the things that we do on a consistent base, uh, basis as the transportation department is do what we call turning movement count. So we look at rather than all of the cars going through an intersection through different um, directions, we actually count the turning movements of cars at an intersection. And so traditionally, what we do is we hire uh, consultants to sit at those intersections, field workers with like an abacus device and actually count the vehicles that are making turns in directions and then create a report, put it into a PDF and share it with the city. And so the opportunity here is, can we use this technology to get a little bit more granular on that, that opportunity and look at particular intersections and not just do it during the time when that, when that consultant was out on the street, but do it 24 by seven, be able to analyze trends, look at uh, things that deviate from normal activity, et cetera. And then because we're doing this on this enterprise platform, we can then take action, whether it's alerting folks or uh, you know, messaging uh, different applications, et cetera. So, so we're actively working on that now. So another example of where we're using um, machine learning is in the space of LPR. So LPR, license plate recognition, our parking enforcement staff have instrumented uh, little three-wheel vehicle vehicles that they drive around with cameras and onboard AI, and they read license plates and then match it against a database of um, registered uh, registered folks around the city who have either paid for parking or who have um, permitted parking for that space. Now that's really useful and has made a ton of efficiency in that process. Um, but again, just like the cameras in the traffic management center, there is this that is very siloed and, and there's opportunities to leverage this data in an enterprise way. So what we did was we integrated that data using that same geo event platform to our enterprise database and then created some dashboards to, to analyze both individual events around uh, parking enforcement violations, but also 
give, give them the, the ability to do trending, look at the data, not only just in terms of parking, but across other data sets. So in the example on the screen, you see that there are some vi violations in downtown, and we're able to look at that data with other data sets. Is there, uh, can we look at this in, in terms of relationships to signage? Is there opportunities for education? Um, can we look at it in relationship to permits? Is there construction activity that's causing our citizens to uh, park in, in, in violation spots? Um, some other examples that we have are, uh, we did another pilot with Esri around um, instrumenting some of our solid waste vehicles with uh, GoPro cameras. So our solid waste folks, they drive around and canvas the city on a weekly basis, picking up trash. So they're one of the few vehicles that is visiting almost every street in the city on a weekly basis. And using a GoPro camera pointed at the pavement, are we able to uh, determine pavement defects? And so um, in a very small pilot, very quickly, we were able to demonstrate um, that this is a viable technology and could be used not only for this, but some of the stuff that Mike was talking about earlier are other opportunities. So um, from a change management perspective, it opens the business up to potentially these other opportunities, which include, um, we're talking to our uh, Raleigh Water folks about the project that Mike mentioned earlier. Uh, Charlotte Water, I believe, is doing some interesting work in the, in, in the space of determining objects, um, water meters using the same technology. And so we're, we're, we're definitely looking at that as well. So um, all of these kind of machine learning projects are obviously game changers. It really changes the conversation from, um, it's, it's, it, it opens up the opportunities exponentially. We're really excited about it. There is so much information that we can gather and uh, from this, this technology, and we're really excited about um, the opportunities. So just to kind of summarize some of the stuff that we've talked to you about, um, AI to us is, is really that next frontier. And we've been able to maximize a lot of the data that, that a city has, that we have. And we've been able to maximize that just with the GIS platform itself. With Esri's platform, we can give the data its own platform to be shared. We have some great applications that run on Esri. We also just have some great applications that do their job really well. Like we don't wanna take that away, but when that data stays siloed, it doesn't help. So giving it a platform gets it out there, but then adding the AI is so crucial because it, it's not, not saying that as humans, we provide a, a value. And, but where do we need to provide that value? And it's, it's, it's not, at every single juncture. And so if we can use AI to sort of eliminate um, the things that we maybe don't need to touch and then let the human do what they do well and, and do it at the end of, a pro end of a process or at the summary of the data and trending it and then make those decisions that help it and advance whatever our initiative is, is, is big to us. And so we are happy to be sharing this information with you. Um, we hope you've learned something taking something away. And obviously you can connect with any of us through um, our information and we're happy to talk to you.